Hi, Talking Cars fans. Want to come visit the Consumer Reports Test Track and join us for recording the 100th episode of the podcast? Send us a short note by August 1st, 2016. Seriously, I mean short. About why you want to come and what question you'd ask us on the show. Send that via email to talkingcars@consumer.org. Based on the responses, we'll select a limited number of people to come to our Connecticut facilities in early August. And while we'd love to pay your way, we're a nonprofit, so you'll have to cover your cost to travel. But we'll have lunch for you. As always, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you soon. Hi, and welcome to Talking Cars with Consumer Reports. Filling in for Tom Mutchler, I'm John Linkove. I'm Gabe Shenhar. And I'm Mark Rexon. We have a Buick Envision sitting behind us, and we also have a Jaguar F-Pace. Both of them are red, by the way. And they compete in that kind of $45,000, $65,000 two-row premium SUV category. Kind of two different takes on it, though. So the Buick, uh, we've had for a while, and we put a bunch of miles on it already. What, what's your take on yeah, it so, so far? Uh, yeah, the Envision uh, it just came out. Uh, surprisingly, it's only a, it's a 2016 model year, which is going to be pretty short. Uh, and but, there's one uh, version for 2016. one version. Um, yeah, lesser versions are coming for 2017. And, uh, you know, Buick uh, is a kind of a funny brand. It's, uh, it became like for General Motors, the, the brand where they put, oh, okay, you know what, this doesn't really fit like a, there's a Chevrolet or a GMC or a Cadillac or... It's like a catch-all brand else. in a sense. So, yeah, we'll give it to, to Buick. So it's uh, sort of an amalgam of uh, all kinds of products from all over the world. Right, you have your, your Opals right. and now so, you have the Chinese-made, yeah, I'm stealing your thunder so, a bit, the, the Chinese-made Envision. Right, so, uh, I mean, regardless of where it's made, you know, some, some Buick models are good, some are really not so much. All right, the Envision, um, it's, it's really surprising that uh, you can have a car that uh, feels so clumsy and it, uh, it, it's so roly-poly in the corners. Mm. Like the, a big the, SUV. Yeah, the wind noise, the, uh, some of the, the things about it are so strange and, uh, and surprising coming from General Motors, which has been on a string of really um, producing product. really good, uh, compelling vehicles. Mm -hmm. And the Envision is kind of an aberration. It's not, uh, it really isn't that. So the one version they have uh, right now for sale in 16 is a turbocharged four cylinder, 252 horsepower, and all wheel drive. So, you know, did you spend some time in it recently? Well, you know, what, what are your feeling, what's your feeling of it behind the wheel? Uh, I just got out of it and while it has some things that are really great, um, it has the, the ride comfort just floats. But mm -hmm. everything else that goes with it, yes, the handling is really just, you can't get a good vibe from how it turns into the corner. Like you don't really know exactly where it's going. You're constantly making steering adjustments to try and keep yourself centered in the lane. Um, it also, the engine, 252 horsepower should be enough to move that down the road. And yet it just sounded thrashy, just rah! Yeah. And anytime you needed that extra bit of power and it had to downshift by two gears instead of just one, it was clunk, I mean, it clunked into gear. And this is not a premium product that costs $45,000. And I think that's one of the problems that any upscale brand that has a mainstream brand underneath it faces it, is, is that you have, sure. you know, the, the underpinnings of Chevrolet here how do you disguise those in such a way? And if you're a talented brand, you know, if, if it's Toyota to Lexus, if it's Honda to Acura, you know, if it's... Uh, oh, even you know, Volkswagen up to Audi or something Volkswagen like to Audi, right, sure. Right. Well, um, if, if you're good at what you can do, you get in the car and you would never think, oh, this is just a, a really nice... Rebadge. A rebadged Jetta, yeah. you know. And, and this, you still get the feeling like there's a lot of Chevy still lurking in it. Well, kind of on that, you know, so well, where it's shooting for is your X3, your well, BMW exactly. X3, your Audi Q5. But, you know, when it comes in a little less, you know, this top Premier well, is 45. Yeah, it's $45,000. Uh, I mean, it, it, Buick would love you to compare this to an Audi Q5. Mm -hmm. And we, I say, wish, you know, careful what you wish for, because, I mean, this is nowhere near yeah. in the same league it's as a BMW in. X3. Or an Audi Q5. Or the Mercedes-Benz GLC. Uh, right. Or, yeah, the Mercedes GLC is a very nice car. Uh, the seats are so flat in this mm -hmm. car. The uh, dash vents are so low. They yeah, they, your they, elbow. they keep you cold here, but, yeah. you know, your head's warm the whole time. The fin finish isn't all that great. Uh, this is not really a premium product. But I think uh, knowing that, uh, General Motors should, should take these cues and make sure that uh, the the next vehicles that are developed on this, right, the on Chevy this Equinox and the GMC Terrain, 
are much better than this. Yeah, because they're, they're, they're okay vehicles. They're not on top of our ratings. You know, they're, they're competent. Yeah, those they are, are the old ones. Yeah, they're the old the ones. Next right, ones. The next ones will be developed right. so based ways on this to go one. on those. Yeah. Another vehicle definitely going to get polarized opinions, the Jaguar F-Pace. So F-Pace, similar to the Discovery Sport we had, a lot of, a lot of similarities there in some in, in interiors. It's, it's, they're, they're close. They look a lot, you know, the, the, the familial uh, you know, features there, but different drive but similar underpinnings of the engine transmission. So I spent my whole July 4th weekend with the Jaguar F-Pace. Uh, okay. um, uh, the Jaguar is still uh, British, uh, even though all the money comes from uh, the Indian company. Uh, Tata, uh, yeah, Tata Motors. Uh, so uh, the F-Pace is kind of, it shows the same kind of ride and handling that uh, we liked uh, about the F XF and the XE. Um, uh, the, the handling is really good mm -hmm. uh, for an SUV. Um, it's sport, you know, you, it feels it's a little sporty. The handling is. I mean, yeah, it's very different than the uh, Discovery Sport. It's yeah. a different platform. Yeah. It's different, uh, different, different vibe, different mm -hmm. uh, thing altogether. Um, I mean, it's got uh, enough power, of course, but um, the ride isn't all that uh, great. Some of the, the fit and finish and the right. creaks and the sharp edges A lot inside. of creaks from the back, particularly, almost yeah. as if something's Th twisting. That, that gives you a bit of a pause, especially for a $54,000 car. Right, right. I mean, I found that, you know, if, it's, if, if you're driving it around town, uh, smooth Southern California secondary roads, you know, um, not the, the pavement that seemed, you know, you'll be all right in this, but, you know, any repeated thumps, it, it just drives right into your back, you know, and, you know, we, we're not getting the sportiest package out there with the giant wheel, yeah. and it still is a rough ride in that car. And then I also found the interior is just oddly positioned. It's almost as if they, they benchmarked the Ford Explorer. You know, they, they moved you very inboard, you know, I'm rubbing the side, and there's a ton of room here where I had to almost reach for my arm to put on the door. Now, you know, your, your feelings on the performance are, are a little different than some of the noise and go and no go. Yeah, and, and I, I felt that this, uh, I'm gonna have to disagree with Gabe. I felt it was a little underpowered. I know that uh, the way car companies make the muffler exhaust notes, um, they can be uh, artificially simulated, say. Um, and it's, it's very odd that a company that can make the world's coolest sounding F-type coupe sound like it's you know an unleashed dragon and yeah, roaring at just you almost a fantastic crackling sound <laughs> and this sounds like a strangled cat it sounds like the jag a little jaguar little baby jaguar so it's uh, none were harmed in none were harmed in the making no, no, of no. this you know but well, the idea it's like of, a blat not a you know a, a growl it's not even a blat it's a squeal it's <laughs> it's it, it's it's it does not come through with what it needs to. And, and I have to agree with you on the packaging side, that when you get inside the car, it, it doesn't feel like you're sitting where you're supposed to. And the back seat as well mm -hmm. um, feels a little bit compromised. Yeah, you could fit an adult behind an adult, but not by much. Now, on you have the, to really recline that you seat. Have, you have to really recline the seat. But the one thing, the one benefit that really impressed me with the with the F-Pace is that the because it's shaped more like a hatchback than an SUV, or as they call them in England, shooting brakes. Right. Yeah, sure. Um, the the cargo area, while narrow top to bottom, is very deep. Yeah. Uh, and so you could carry a lot of things back there. And I think that's a, a you know if if you're one of those people who goes antiquing and you wish to make an arrival by showing up in a Jaguar. Sure, sure, sure. This might be your thing. I mean, it'll, it'll definitely get a lot of looks. It'll have a lot of interest. Actually, I, I got no looks whatsoever. <laughs> really? Because it just doesn't look like a Jaguar. I mean, uh, luckily they put the, the giant mouth Jaguar on it, yeah. there, so people know it's a Jaguar. Otherwise, you'll have no idea it's a Jaguar. I think it's more key. Yes, uh, as to the power, I mean, uh, power is, of course, in the eye of the beholder. You can always have more power. Uh, <laughs> just. Uh, I mean, it comes with 340 horsepower, which is about 100 more horsepower than the uh, standard engines and mm -hmm. competitors. Um, but uh, yeah, it sometimes uh, feels a little I, slow, particularly it, you know the, the downshifts. This transmission stutters a little bit, you know, and it, it's it's not. But uh, ready. I mean, more important than that, a Jaguar SUV. I mean, this was an unfathomable concept just a yeah. few years ago. Porsche blew that out of the yeah. water, right? So uh, I mean, just, <laughs> what's yeah. next, a Maserati the, the, SUV? The Porsche Cayenne. You know, you know, everybody was like, you know, having a heart attack. Oh right. my God, Porsche SUV. I mean, what, what happened? Um, it's, it ended up being a huge commercial success, sure, sure. and any car company who's, who's business savvy is going to have to offer a line of SUVs. That's and where the market so is So it was inevitable that Jaguar would have an SUV. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, uh, the Maserati you mentioned, yeah, that's for another episode.
I can't believe they have a Maserati SUV. That's <laughs> so we're going to move on to a couple uh, reader questions now. Um, so Lils uh, asks, I can understand you guys don't like the Volt. What I don't understand is your explanation about what makes the Volt a lesser car than the Prius. So the we Volt, don't like the Volt. Well, the, we it that? scores a little less than the, than the Prius in our ratings. Oh, okay. And our last episode, we talked about it. Talked about kind of the, the, the positives, but also the shortcomings of it, and compared to the Prius with its superior fuel economy and its roomy interior. All right. So let me cl clarify. Um, we like the Volt. I mean, the mm -hmm. Volt is, is really works if your driving pattern. Uh, is such that you're going to benefit from frequent charging and maximizing on the electric range. Right. Otherwise, uh, in, uh, in gas mode, the car gets 38 miles per gallon only. And that's compared to the Prius, which gets 52 miles per gallon overall all right. the time, right. no matter what distance you're driving. And it always and has heat as well, the Prius. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you're getting, um, so the Prius might fit the needs of more people without any need to ever plug it in. Uh, otherwise, uh, the the Volt, uh, you know, it suffers from a tight rear seat, oh, bad front, visibility. Yeah, yep, yep. The and interior is better than last generation. Right. They've definitely made it more of a livable vehicle. Right. But you know, you are st stuck to that wire, so to speak. You know, if if you're not charging right. it, you're dragging around a whole powertrain. Right. But just because it scores a couple of points less than the Prius doesn't mean we don't like it. Okay. Well, Mark, your take on it? I mean, we've had both of them. We know the Prius, certainly we put on the cover of our April issue. You sure. know, we're very impressed with it through our testing. Um, you know, it's not the sportiest, even though it's a sportier Prius. Mm -hmm. You know, Volt Prius, what's your take on it? Well, as someone with uh, veteran experience on Los Angeles freeways, the Prius won't get you into the carpool lane anymore, and the Volt will, because it can be driven in battery-only mode. And that's something that means a lot to sure. Californians. Um, and I'm not sure how many other states are going to want to expand to that sort of rule as our roadways get more and more cluttered. Mm -hmm. But the idea of if, you're, if your commute is less than 50 miles and you have recharging at your place of work, you will never need to refuel your Volt during the week. And for a lot of people, that's a big deal because sure. if, if, you're, if you're always having to go to the gas station every third day of work, it's, it's, it's a drag. Right. And at the same time, this is not... a pure electric vehicle where you're worried about running out of charge. Mm -hmm. I mean, Definitely. Nissan Leaf owners, no, it's no range anxiety. We've heard, we've heard you guys. That was, uh, <laughs> that was caught in ours. <laughs> um, and, and so the idea of being able to have this backup just in case, and as, you know, as far as the California Highway Patrol is concerned, they don't care if you're driving in battery only mode or gasoline assist mode, just that it, while you're in your Volt, just that you, <laughs> just that you have the sticker. So from that perspective, it's really a functionally good idea to have one of these in Southern California for, for, that, for that purpose alone. You know, it, it would be nice to see a, a couple of the compromise, you know, the, the car come with compromises only, I think, from the, the engine powertrain, you know, but the still, the, they made it a third, you know, three row across, but that's not really a third seat in the middle, and, you know, it's still snug. They're, they're still you can't have, put a child seat in it. You can't put a child seat in there. You, you don't want to put no. a human in there. So right. it's, there's still some, some, some issues, but it's a far better car, far more enjoyable to drive. I find it, you know, a, a more pleasant car to drive than the Prius. Um, but the mileage for me is, yeah, is a big yeah. thing. It's quieter than the Prius. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So last question, Nihar M77 asks, can you do an updated video on Ford with their new Fusion in Sync 3 and a Talking Cars episode? Well, we have a lot of experience with Sync 3. We've got it in our escape. We've got, we've sampled it even well before it even came on the market. Yeah. So what's your take on the Sync 3? So yeah, Sync 3 is great. I mean, it works so much better than uh, my Ford Touch. I mean, it's quicker. Well, there's a low the, bar. The, uh, <laughs> the fonts are large, the, the right. buttons are respond. Uh, it's a lot more intuitive. Uh, we've experienced it uh, in um, our uh, Focus we recently updated, uh, in the Escape we recently uh, bought, the 17 yeah. one. And, uh, and we uh, will update uh, accordingly across the Ford line. So, and we're going to take a look at the Fusion going forward, uh, yeah, we'll maybe take retest. A look. We'll take a look at the Fusion, see if we need, need to retest it. it. It's only a freshening for 17. Uh, among the uh, Sync 3, there is also a, a rotary dial for the shifter. Right, right. So, on the topic of Sync 3, much easier to use, better than my Ford Touch, and what else can consumers look for? Sync 3 is a big step up. Is it, does it make it the best? Does it make it the benchmark? Our recent testing shows that Chrysler's Uconnect system is really strong. Uh, we'll have to see how my Ford Touch evolves into Sync 3 to make a final judgment. Well, that's all we have for today. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.